This is X1, a powerful single board computer capable of performing tasks that seem almost magical for a small device like this. Safe to say, my Raspberry Pi is feeling a little insecure right now. So in this video, I will show you how to set up this amazing SBC, run some benchmarks on it and yes, you bet we are gonna try some games on it. Now let's unbox this thing. This is the X1's box and right on the cover, you will find some key specs which we'll discuss in detail in the later part of the video. Inside the box, you get a 12V 3A power supply that delivers up to 36W. And here it is, the X1 SBC. Now this variant comes with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of eMMC storage, priced at around $136. But if you're looking to save some cash, you can get the very basic 4GB version with no eMMC of course for as low as $107. Now let's take a closer view of the board. Believe it or not, this big chunk of metal sitting on top of the board isn't just for looks. It's actually a heat sink with a small cooling fan tucked inside. On this side, you get four USB ports, two USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0, plus an ethernet connector on the left. Flipping to the other side, there's a headphone jack, HDMI 2.0 and the power supply connector. Over here, you will find an SD card slot, a micro HDMI port, and even a built-in microphone. And finally, some GPIO. What's cool about this is that you can control them directly from software in real time. No coding required, pretty neat. Now flipping to the back. This is where the real magic happens. Here, you got an M2 slot for NVMe slash SATA SSDs. And it supports up to two terabytes for super fast storage. No Raspberry Pi before the Pi 5 had this feature. On the top, there's a 2.5 inch SATA connector, but keep in mind you will need a separate adapter if you want to connect your SATA SSD. And up here on the top left is the DSi connector for the displays. I got two more boxes here to unbox. Let's see what's inside. The first box is packed with accessories, including a casing for the board, antennas, and a bunch of other components. In the second box, there's a 7 inch color TFT LCD module, but for this video, I won't be using it. I'll stick to my HDMI monitor instead. Oh, and they also included a stand for the display. Now it comes with Windows 11 pre installed, so setting it up is super easy. All I need to do is connect a mouse, keyboard, Ethernet cable, and an HDMI cable. Let's plug in the power supply, and there it is. The fan starts spinning right away. I have already gone through the initial window setup, entering all the required details when you boot it up for the first time. So let's type the password and we are on the homepage of Windows 11. Let's quickly check out the specs of this mini PC. It's powered by an Intel Celeron N5105, a quad core processor with a base clock of 2 GHz and boost speeds up to 2.9 GHz. Not bad for a device this small. As for memory, we got 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. But as you can see, only 82GB is actually usable after the system takes its share. Now when I tried connecting to the internet, I noticed something strange. There was no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth option. So I tried a few fixes, such as installing drivers, updating windows, but nothing worked. Then I found out that the X1 doesn't have a built-in Wi-Fi module. And this little guy right here is the solution. So I plugged the Wi-Fi module into the back of the board and to my surprise, it worked. But there was another problem, the Wi-Fi signal was super weak, so time to bring in the antennas. And as you can see, now the signal strength is much better. Next, I played a 4K video to test the video output quality and honestly, I was impressed. It ran super smoothly with only a few dropped frames which is totally fine considering how well it handled 4K playback. Alright, time for some benchmarks. Starting with Geekbench, the X1 scored 512 in single core and around 1500 in multi core, which honestly is pretty impressive for this board. Next up, Nova Bench gave a similar result with an overall score of 516. So far, the performance is looking solid. Next, I tested the performance of its integrated GPU, so I started with a simple aquarium test first. 
On increasing the fishes number to 5000, the frame rate dropped slightly to 54, which further dropped in half at 10,000 fishes. Even with 30,000 fish, it still managed 13 FPS, which while far from smooth, demonstrates that the GPU can handle heavy loads. To push the GPU even further, I ran the Unigine Heaven benchmark at full HD resolution with high quality settings. The final results showed an average FPS of 12 with a minimum of 5 FPS and a maximum of 22 FPS. While the GPU managed to render the scenes, the low frame rates indicates that it's struggling with complex graphics workloads, particularly at high resolutions and demanding settings. Still, I'm impressed with what it can do. After all the tests, it was time for some real-world fun, gaming. I wanted to see how the X1 would perform under actual gameplay conditions. GTA Liberty City ran surprisingly well with frame rates hitting as high as 75 FPS at times. While occasional FPS drops were noticeable, they never dipped below 45 FPS, ensuring a smooth experience overall. Next, I tested the older version of Counter-Strike and it exceeded all my expectations. No noticeable frame drops and the FPS remained as rock solid 72 throughout the entire session. It handled the game flawlessly. So if you are into casual or retro gaming, this board is a game changer for you. To control the board GPIO pins and windows, you will need to download a dedicated software. It's available on their official website. But here's the catch. Only 6 GPIO pins are accessible in Windows, while the rest can only be used if you are running Linux based operating system. So to test this out, I connected two LEDs and a push button to the pins. The leftmost pin 19 is connected to the blue LED, pin 18 is connected to the red LED and the push button to pin 0. Now here is something interesting. When I connected the ground pin which is on the far right to the common ground of the circuit, both LEDs lit up immediately. That means the GPIOs are set to high by default. Next, let's take a look at the software interface. It lists all available GPIO pins and controlling them is straightforward. To turn off the blue LED, which is connected on pin 19, I just enter 0 and hit right IO and it turns off. To turn it back on, I enter 1. Now let's try the same for the red LED and it works exactly as expected. So the output mode is functioning properly. Now let's check the input mode. Since the push button is connected to pin 0, I first select pin 0 and set it to input mode. Now to read the pin, click on read IO. Here we can see that the status of the pin is high right now. Now if I press the button and read the pin again, it now shows 0 volt, which is correct because the button is wired to ground. So overall, the GPIOs are working as expected, but you can't perform any logical task using it. For example, taking an input and based on the readings, turning other output on. So if you want full control, automation or logical operations, you'll need to switch to Linux. So honestly for me, the GPIO functionality in Windows is pretty much useless. And that's a wrap for the X1, pretty solid SPC with some cool features. Would you pick this over a Raspberry Pi? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.